Hi, I'm Anthony Gurley. I'm one of the attorneys here at Kershaw Cook and Tally. Uh, I work for Stuart Tally, who is in charge of all of our hip litigation. Uh, Stu is traveling this week, so I'm filling in for him on this regular uh, video blog uh, because we do want to get some information out to everybody right away, and that is that uh, a, in the Depew ASR litigation, uh, a case that was tried in 2013, it was Lauren Kransky versus Depew, and that case was tried down in Los Angeles, as many of you uh, may have remembered. Uh, Stuart was putting out daily blogs, kind of what was going on with the case, and when the verdict came down, well, this past Friday, uh, the second uh, appellate district of the Court of Appeals rendered their opinion uh, from that trial. As you all know, Depew, although the, the verdict was in Mr. Kransky and his family's favor, uh, in that case, the jury awarded approximately $338,000 in uh, economic damages, so past and potentially future uh, medical expenses, and then they also awarded $8 million in non-economic damages. So uh, compensation for Mr. Kransky, uh, his pain, his suffering, his mental anguish, his loss of enjoyment of life, disfigurement, and all of the the, what we refer to as non-economic damages. So the total verdict was about $8.3 million, and that was back in 2013. Uh, but of course, Depew appealed the decision, uh, and the court just rendered uh, its opinion. So I just we, we just wanted to go over with you uh, what the court's ruling was. Uh, and for those of you that are interested, I'll give you a little bit of detail about it. So first of all, the court uh, affirmed the $8.3 million verdict in the, the favor uh, of Mr. Kransky and his family. So that's, that's the good news, is that uh, the Court of Appeal uh, looked at all of the Pew's challenges, uh, and in every single one of them, they affirmed uh, the trial court's rulings and what the jury did. So uh, what DePew did when they appealed that case is they essentially challenged six things. Uh, the first three things, DePew basically said, uh, the judge messed up. And then the second three things, the uh, Depew said the jury messed up. So what happened was that six challenges were the first three was that uh, the trial judge messed up when it excluded the evidence of the FDA's approval of the device. The second thing, the uh, second way they said the judge messed up was by permitting testimony from Mr. Kransky's treating physician that the judge shouldn't have done that. Uh, and then the third thing was they, uh, they, they say that the judge screwed up when it permitted, uh, the judge permitted testimony from an orthopedic surgeon that the plaintiff's attorneys called as an expert. Uh, so on the first part, the Depew wanted to introduce evidence that the ASR was approved by the FDA, that this was approved for sale, uh, and they wanted the jury to know that. Well, the plaintiffs objected to it, and the reason they did is they said, listen, DePew is going to mischaracterize this evidence, and they're going to try to confuse the jury, because there's really two ways that a device can be placed on the market, and one of them is called the 501K approval process, and the other one is called a PMA, uh, or pre-market approval process. Now, in the 501K approval process, when a company puts a product on the market under that prong, all it does is the FDA only examines whether that product is substantially similar to another product that's out on the market. And that's the way the Depew ASR went on the market. It, it, the, the, the FDA never examines the safety of it or anything like that. It's just, is there another metal-on-metal metal product on the market that is substantially similar. Similar. So the whole inquiry from the FDA is about, is this substantially similar to another product on the market? The PMA approval process, well, that is much more rigorous, um, and it focuses specifically on the safety and the efficacy of the product itself. And that's not how the Depew ASR went on the market. So Depew just wanted to introduce that, hey, the FDA approved this thing. And what the plaintiff said is, no, that's going to confuse the jury. Um, and so the court examined it, and there's an evidence code section called 352, where the court is given broad powers uh, to admit or exclude evidence. And one of the ways it can exclude evidence 
is if they believe, if the court believes that the, the probative value, the useful value of this evidence is substantially outweighed by other things. And one of those other things is an undue consumption of time. And that's the one that the court focused on here. Uh, it can confuse the issues, but here the court said that if I allow you to put that FDA evidence on, then the plaintiffs are going to be entitled to call experts uh, that are familiar with the FDA process and these two different prongs, the 501k and the PMA process, and they're going to be allowed to put on experts to educate the jury about the differences that one of them focuses on safety, the other one doesn't. Uh, also, the plaintiffs uh, may be entitled to put on information as to whether or not uh, Depew failed to comply with their obligations to report all the known adverse events of this device to the FDA. And I think if I let you guys do that, we're going to create um, a mini trial within the trial and maybe it has the potential to confuse the jury and it, it's just going to result in an undue consumption of time compared to the probative value of that. That's what the court said uh, and the Court of Appeals looked at that and said, nope, the judge got it right. The judge has a lot of discretion. Uh, he made a good record. He exercised his discretion uh, in a way that uh, it was okay to do. So they shot down DePew's first uh, challenge in, the, in that matter. The second one, uh, permitting the testimony from Mr. Kransky's treating physician. Um, Mr. Kransky's treating physician testified to his high cobalt and chromium levels, uh, and he testified that he believed they were toxic and that they were killing him. Now, uh, based on what he knew, he didn't believe any of Mr. Kransky's other uh, numerous health problems were the cause of his pain and suffering, though. He concluded that those toxic levels of chromium and cobalt uh, w w that were the cause of his his pain and his suffering. Um, now the plaintiffs also did call a toxicologist uh, as well as a bio uh, biomedical engineer to testify about Mr. Kransky's metal levels and the ions uh, to explain to the jury that these were in fact toxic and would cause him harm. Uh, however, Depew just didn't believe that Mr. Kransky's doctor, his treating doctor, should be allowed to testify to those things. Uh, because he wasn't a toxicologist. Um, the court ultimately ruled that Mr. Kransky and this, um, uh, what I'm saying is the Court of Appeals agreed with the trial court that uh, Mr. Kransky's treating doctor had sufficient qualifications to testify about those issues and that it's generally permissible for a treating physician to testify not just about personal observations uh, but also to his opinions and conclusions uh, and that Depew's remedy in that uh, respect was to cross-examine him. If they felt he wasn't qualified enough to testify to these things, well then they could cross-examine him in front of the jury and try to show the jury that no, he really doesn't know what he's talking about when it comes to those things. Uh, but the Court of Appeal, uh, the court of appeal uh, affirmed the trial court in that respect. Uh, and it also uh, it's, should be noted that uh, before revision his doctor testified that Mr. Kransky was was basically on the verge of death uh, and after the removal and revision surgery uh, he again did develop signs of improved health so uh, the court the court of appeals did note that in their opinion uh, and the third way that Depew uh, in this appeal said that the judge had messed up was to say that they shouldn't have allowed testimony from the orthopedic surgeon expert that the plaintiffs called so Depew uh, objected to this testimony because this orthopedic doctor used five case examples that he had uh, that he believed were representative to illustrate how this device fails. And uh, two things. Number one is uh, when he was deposed, when that doctor's deposition was taken, uh, he did mention that he, they would be uh, providing photographs of some of these other patients to show during the trial. Well, the plaintiffs produced those photos just days before the trial. So Depew's objections were based on two things. Number one, that this doctor's opinions were just merely uh, anecdotal and couldn't be compared to Kransky's problems, uh, which were quite different. And two, we weren't given these photos of these other surgeries until a few days ago. Uh, and we weren't ever able to uh, question this doctor on those other five um, patients. Uh, so the court, what the court ruled in that 
uh, respect was that, you know, this doctor, his opinions weren't just merely based on those five uh, patients alone. Uh, this doctor had testified that he had performed 207 implant surgeries with the Depew ASR, uh, and he had performed 70 revision surgeries. And these five were just merely uh, illustrative of the way this device fails. Uh, in addition, the court noted that this doctor overall had performed between five and 6,000 hip implants and had re uh, performed somewhere between 800 and 1,000 revision surgeries in all with all types of hips. So um, the court said that you know he was simply using these five cases uh, permissibly to illustrate how the device failed and he was qualified to do so. Uh, as for Depew's argument that, hey, this was unfair surprise, what the court did is it, it fashioned a solution whereby it halted the trial and it allowed Depew to go back uh, and take this doctor's deposition on those five particular patients uh, and then they resumed the trial. Uh, the Court of Appeals, in, in ruling on that, actually praised the trial judge uh, regarding how quickly he was able to come up with a fair remedy mid-trial uh, to kind of preserve the case. Uh, and they, the, the Court of Appeals actually stated that his solution was a well-crafted and appropriate remedy. So that was it as far as the three main ways that the Pew tried to say the judge messed up. Uh, the Court of Appeals disagreed with them and said the trial the judge did just fine. Uh, now the next three ways that the what DePew appealed was that the jury messed up. And the first was that they said there was no substantial evidence of a design defect to show that it was the cause of Mr. Kransky's injuries. So DePew basically said there were other causes of Mr. Kransky's injuries, namely uh, an infection and a poor implant angle that the surgeon had put in. Uh, now, we know the plaintiff's attorneys, uh, Brian Panish in this case, Mike Kelly, John Gomez, they, when they, uh, as to that issue, the plaintiffs put up a slide showing uh, that this, this design was defective at any angle, and they showed uh, an angle of 38 degrees, 40 degrees, 44 degrees, 45 degrees, and 48 degrees, and they showed photos of each one of those, and every single one of them had failed and uh, necessitated a revision surgery. Um, now to this, uh, whether or not there was substantial evidence to show that it was a defective design that was the cause of his injuries and not something else, to this the court simply really deferred to the jury's findings. Uh, if a reasonable juror uh, could have found for the plaintiff based on the entire record, uh, then the court kind of leaves it alone. Uh, it doesn't reweigh the evidence or the credibility of the witnesses. That's for the jury to decide. And uh, since the jury came out uh, in, the, in uh, DePew's favor in this regard, the court left it alone. Uh, DePew did argue that Kransky was required um, to eliminate all other potential causes. And to this, the Court of Appeals stated that Montana law, which the California court was applying Montana law in this case because that's where Mr. Kransky was from, uh, Montana law simply doesn't require the plaintiff to eliminate all other causes of his injuries. Uh, when there's conflicting evidence on causation, Montana law says it's for the jury to decide. So uh, the, the Court of Appeal dispensed with that argument. Uh, the second way that the, that the Pew said that the, ju the jury messed up in this case was that its verdict was internally inconsistent and therefore it cannot stand. And this is what DePew argued. First, uh, they said the jury could not have found that the implant was defectively designed, which required a finding that the device was dangerous beyond what physicians had anticipated, uh, but still find that DePew had adequately warned the physicians with respect to failure to adequately warn, uh, of the ad adequately warned cause of action. So uh, to that, the Court of Appeal said that when Kransky got his initial implant, information was still flowing in uh, to DePew from the medical community about these devices. And he got his implant in 2007. Um, so the jury could find that at that time, surgeons were adequately warned while still finding that the design itself was defective based upon uh, 
it failing to later perform as the physicians would have expected beyond the physicians expectations so thus w with that there was no uh, inconsistency in the jury's findings the second way that uh, Depew said the jury's findings were flawed was that Depew argued the jury could not find that the ASR's design defects caused Kransky's injuries on the strict liability claim but did not cause his injuries on the negligence claim. The, the, Depew said that is internally inconsistent and that can't stand. Uh, well to this again uh, the Court of Appeals said no the jury's finding is not inconsistent and here's why. The court stated that the jury could have found that Depew for instance was negligent when it designed the implant, uh, a defect in the implant caused an injury to Kransky, but the particular def defect that caused Kransky's injury was not the result of Depew's negligence. And the example that the Court of Appeal gave was that the jury could have found that Depew was negligent in designing the implant because they failed to have a toxicologist on the design team. Uh, but Kransky didn't prove that had there been a toxicologist on the design team, the product would not have come onto the market in a defective state. So there's an instance where Depew could have been negligent, uh, but still it, it's not inconsistent with finding that it was a defective design. So, and then finally the last thing that uh, Depew appealed in this case uh, was that the damage award was excessive. And to that the court pretty quickly dispensed with Depew's arguments uh, simply, Montana law requires that the amount that the jury awarded was to be so grossly out of proportion as to shock the conscience. That's the, the term that's really used. Does this shock the conscience? Uh, and to that, uh, Depew wanted the court to look at other cases, uh, or other similar cases, but uh, the, our Court of Appeal noted that Montana law already forbids using damage awards in one case as a measuring rod in another case because they're unique. So uh, because the court found that the $8.3 million and they listed the evidence that was given uh, Mr. Kransky's testimony, the testimony by his family, the pain and the suffering that he had went through, uh, the fact that a lot of his other health ailments that he had would come and go but the pain from the ASR was always there every single day. Uh, so much so that he had testified, even though his doctors told him that there was a high probability that he would not survive his revision surgery, he went ahead with it anyway uh, and even made funeral plans prior to it because he was in such pain uh, and he thought, I'm either going to die right now then doing the surgery uh, or I'm just going to die slowly in pain. So he chose to go ahead with it. Um, thankfully, after the revision sur surgery, his health did improve. Uh, uh, Unfortunately, you know, he, he, uh, he did not live to see this opinion be rendered. Uh, Mr. Kransky did pass away while this was pending on appeal. Uh, so the, the uh, good news is that the Court of Appeal agreed with Mr. Kransky. Uh, you know, he took up this fight uh, against a, a big company like Johnson & Johnson and Depew, uh, and he was vindicated by the Court of Appeal here. So, uh, you know, our hearts go out to his family, and we hope this gives them some semblance uh, of comfort uh, or, or uh, having been vindicated in this fight. Uh, as for everyone else, uh, what does this opinion mean? What does this appellate opinion mean? Uh, it simply means that the, the, in the ASR litigation, which everyone knows is separate from the Pinnacle litigation, um, this was a case that went to trial. Uh, it was a tough case because Mr. Kransky did have other health ailments, uh, but a jury found uh, against a pew and in favor of Mr. Kransky. Uh, so again, you know, perhaps with other ASR cases that are out there uh, that still could be pending trial, uh, maybe this, this makes Depew think twice and work a little harder to settle that case. Uh, maybe not. It will be a remain to be seen. But we just want to give you the news of, uh, for those of you that had uh, been following the Kransky case that happened in 2013, uh, it was finally the Court of Appeal came down with their decision on Friday. Uh, not very likely that this is, uh, if they do appeal it to the California Supreme Court, it's not likely that the Cal Supremes will take up this case. Uh, so it, th this opinion is, is pretty much the end of that case.